my name is Chris. Uh, I'm with Grid. So we have about 30,000 people nationwide. We're the largest realtor-owned uh, investment network in the nation. Uh, let's see, we are up to 34 different Grid communities in the United States. Um, we're opening probably about one every other week on average. So we do have one in the Philippines also. Um, I want to say they're starting one in Mexico here soon as well. But um, yeah, our job is just kind of bring people in, help grow your database. Um, it's very, very interactive. So we're not going to sit up here and talk the entire time. We're going to involve other people. How many people have bought or sold the property in the last couple years, two years? Good. So we're going to call on you and ask you a bunch of questions. Um, we're going to interview you and grill you. So, um, but yeah. So the purpose is uh, we created this for people that want to start investing in real estate. Uh, in January, we started how to find properties. We go through how to finance properties. We go through how to rehab properties. Today, we're talking about fixing and flipping. Primarily, we're probably going to touch a little bit on rental properties because she has quite a few rentals as well. Um, yeah, then we'll do a Q&A and we'll take about 30 minutes and we'll hang out and we'll do some networking. All right, do you want to introduce yourself? I can, yeah. Oh, my name is Cassia. I'm from Brazil. I uh, got here 10 years ago and the first thing that I did was buy like a little house for $8,000, find someone to fix it for me and then he did it, up front all the money. Uh, it was a contractor. I had to talk to like 50 contractors. It was, it was not the first one. So like someone decided to do it. And then three months later, I sold it for 55,000. So that was, I paid him. And that was my capital to start because I didn't have any extra money. So from there, I just kept doing and doing. I was doing really slow for the first five years because I couldn't get finance. But once I got started with hard money and banks, then I was able to scale much faster. It was like a perfect time to do BRRs also, BRRs. So it was really easy to buy low, fix it, refinance it, and then rent it. So I tried to do both at the same time. I tried to do two rentals and two flips at the same time. And always with the flip profit, I reinvest on the rentals. So that way, just I can keep growing. So what year did you move here? Uh, it was 2011. Okay, so that was 2011. So the market was kind of recuperating a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, interest rates in 2011 are probably six and a half percent, right? What are they now? 6.75? Almost seven, yes. So rates aren't that high. Uh, from 1972 to 2019, the average rate is, I think, six. 16. Six, yeah. So we're pretty, we're pretty average right now. Um, so you said something. You said a lot of a lot of things, but the first yes. thing was you had to call them a million contractors I had to, to find yes. somebody that would mm -hmm. take on your yeah, project. Yeah, so you cannot take a no when you cannot. People cannot tell you you have no experience. You don't know what you're doing. That's not going to work. You just gotta kind of trust a little bit and just go for it and try. Because a lot of people they call me or they text me. They spend a lot of time studying or like reading books, watching podcasts, like for one or two years, and that. This money is better invested if you go and actually buy a property. Even if you lose a little money, a bit of money or break even, it's still much better than just keep reading, studying, coming to meetings and all that. So I think experience like it's priceless. Yeah. What did you say to that contractor that made him take on your job versus the other one? The same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I have no money. I bought this house. It looks bad. If you do it for me, uh, I'll pay like the material, I'll pay your job, I mean like all your mm -hmm. uh, fees, and I'll give you extra 10% of my profit. And a lot of people go like, no, I don't know you. No one, you don't even speak English. <laughs> sure, yeah, which is challenging, you yeah, know? Um, yeah. And I'm sure your English has probably gotten better. Yeah, I got a little better. I hope, after, <laughs> since 2011. Yeah. Um, so do you still work with that contractor today? No, he moved. Okay. Yeah. How long did you work with him? Uh, about for? three years. Okay. Yeah. But you probably made him some money. Oh, yeah, made him some money. Yeah. yeah. He was happy. Yeah. He wants to do the next deal the same way. And I go, no, but now I got the money, so I don't have to pay the percent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to pay for the work. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So you, did you, you lived in that first house that you did? Mm -mm. No. no. Where were you, were you renting I rented, or? Yes. Okay. I went for 
eight years before wow. I buy my own house. Yeah, I was up to 10 properties when I bought my house. Okay, what made you rent versus buy? I didn't want to put the money on the house that I was going to buy. I rather just like be invested. Okay. So if someone has I put in their house now and they could rent, would you recommend maybe they pull out their money and then put them and go buy a property with that if they wanted to rent? I, I don't think so. Not at those rates today. If you have like a mortgage in your house for 3.5, mm -hmm. you're not going to refinance a 7. I don't yeah. think it makes a lot of sense. Or even sell their house? hard to sell because of where you're gonna live. Where should they get the money in the, right now? If, if you were to, if someone were to ask, how do I get started, mm -hmm. where do I get the money? I'm kind of living paycheck to paycheck. Uh -huh. I or, would definitely try to get hard money. Mm -hmm. It's a little hard and tricky because they require a little bit of experience or just friends and family. Yeah, 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 yeah friends and family is a, a big one too. Um, Especially, for, yeah, you gotta pitch your friends and family. Chris, yeah, how did you buy him. your first property? I it was a poor family, and I was a first-time home buyer. So and this was nice. 2005, okay. so seven, six, or eighteen years ago. Yeah. Um, so it was zero money down, owner occupied, and I left the house. Yeah, <laughs> and that was cash flowing probably immediately. It was. It was. So yeah, I, I lived through both, you know, the Great Recession and seeing things kind of go up and down um, in between. So that's why I'm a big fan of the long-term uh, hold is the rents tend to stay steady and not you know, go up. Yeah, how, how long did you live there? Just the one year? Or? Um, so I, I was similar uh, to Cassia where I, I lived in all my buildings and then like uh, the last five years, I lived in an apartment, and I just bought a house for the first time like a year ago. Wow! To, for, After to keep my credit free and yeah, um, just to be able to continue to buy. Yeah. So were you building your credit? Oh, yeah. go ahead. I got a question for you. Did you do owner occupancy um, or owner occupied uh, mortgages on yours since you're living in them? Yes, thirty year fix. Cool. Great. Which yeah. you can still do today, and yeah. you mm -hmm. can even get probably yeah, down to three percent down. It's and the problem is <laughs> I'm it's a veteran, so I started oh, yeah. with a zero percent down. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. So here's here's a major veteran hack. If you're a veteran or first time homeowner, look for properties. You can get on PropStream or something. You can find properties that have a VA loan, and you can actually assume that loan yeah. for that person yeah. at at a lower rate. So you can assume someone's three and a half percent, two and a half percent loan. It's a huge hack for, for veterans. I've seen that. Because people, what, what they have <coughs> equity in their house, but really they have another asset, which is their, their mortgage. Mm -hmm. It's a huge thing. And you could even pay a little bit more because in the overall you know, run, Same you're going to be paying mm -hmm. less. Yeah. Yeah, you learned something. We'll see you next month. <laughs> but that's what I would. That's what I would do if I were if I was a veteran. I don't know if you have your family situation or not. But that's when it gets a little. Past that point. Okay. Yeah. That's when it gets a little difficult too. Is you know realistically, is a family of four going to live in a one bedroom four family? Probably not realistically. But I got my first four doors by a house hack. Basically. Yeah. Zero percent down. Yeah. And you only have to live there for a year. Technically. Not. Really. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's a good suggestion. Yeah. So when you you acquired ten uh -huh. properties I before you bought your bought first one. property, mm -hmm. was it an income number that you were looking for? Yeah, it was a, a goal that I said to myself. I said I'm only gonna allow myself to buy a house that I want to live when I have ten rentals first. So I want to have that. Yeah. And then when I got it, I started looking for houses and then I just bought my house. I tried to buy a dated one and I remodeled mm -hmm. and then they brought the, the value up also. Okay. So yeah, I made a lot of equity. Did you buy that one with a normal loan? Conventional, yeah. Okay. Conventional. And then did you refinance and pull money out or no? No, I didn't. Cause I, yeah, because I had the money to, okay. yeah, that one I had. 
just to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you suggest someone did that if they didn't have the money to That's do right. like a? Oh yeah, you can get a construction loan yeah. where you buy where you get like the purchase price plus all the model just mm -hmm. do a blank and loan. Yeah. Yeah, just pay twenty percent of that. Yeah. Is yeah. it? We don't have any lenders here. No. So it's called a home style loan. So if you're doing a conventional loan, it's called a home style loan. You can move into the house, get everything repaired, and it, it's all wrapped up in your loan. So, um, or the, uh, Kelly, what's the FHA one called? The 203K. Two, the 203K yeah. loan, yeah, yeah, so. But, all right, we can't have any more workout people come <laughs> to these meetings anymore. <laughs> like, me and Cole are supposed to be the workout people. <laughs> this is getting ridiculous. <laughs> Um, all right, so where did you go from? So you bought your house, you had 10 rentals, uh -huh. and then were you flip? You were flipping during that time too? Yeah, How were you flipping. finding the properties back then? Well, I'm an Asian also, so mm -hmm. MLS, but a lot is word of mouth. Some people just text you, hey, someone wants to sell a house, mm -hmm. yeah, or someone like pass away, they just wanna get rid of it, or get bad tenants. And sometimes it pans out, sometimes it's not good, but sometimes it is. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just like, through connections mainly okay how many houses do you think you have to analyze before you buy one not many normally just um, from the pictures mm -hmm. and the address and the comps you can really narrow down I still want to go there make sure I like the neighborhood and see like the houses around but probably gotta go to three houses to pick one that's it mm -hmm. okay so there are, are there a lot of investors in your area or not that many I think I think there's a lot of investors. Yeah. I think there's a lot of investors everywhere now, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody yes. kind of wants to get into mm -hmm. that now. Yeah. So, okay. Um, How do you determine when you, which ones you're going to hold and which ones you're going to flip? Yeah, that's a tricky question. Because every house that I buy, I could either flip or hold it. When I buy it, I, it needs to make sense either way. And then I just go with my gut. If I like it, the location, if I have another rental close to the location. So if it's far away from everything that I have, and when I say far, I say like five miles, then I just like, I don't know, I'm just gonna sell it because I don't wanna be like driving 20 minutes to, to fix. Mm -hmm. That's why I was late today, because I have a rental that's like yes. 25 minutes away and I got stuck yes. in traffic and then, I try to get rid of the ones that yeah. are not concentrating in the same area because I think much easier since mm -hmm. mostly are single families just now I'm gonna start to do like small buildings like four plexes or bigger buildings but I was doing single families all. Yeah. so all when you life. when you do that it's a lot easier to determine if yeah. you're gonna flip it or not too oh, yeah. because you know the numbers gonna, you know yeah. the neighborhood yeah. oh yeah 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 are all of yours Kind of closer. So well, you get because you have Illinois and within those areas, they're like within blocks. Pretty yeah, close. That's yeah, that's much better. Yeah, one of the biggest mistakes I ever made was I bought anything that would. Everyone's familiar with Burr, or probably not. So, when we say Burr, we we buy the property, we rent it, we rehab it, we rent it out, and then we refinance it at. You can go up to 80%, I don't recommend it, but we refinance it, then pull our money out, and then we can go do it again on different properties. Mm -hmm. um, when I started investing in 2015, 2015, 2016, any property that would fit that criteria, I bought. Didn't matter if it was like half an hour away. Um, I mean, I was somewhat choosy on the neighborhood, but I literally bought any property. I got up to 30, around 30 properties or so within two years, it was pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And then I learned that I hated it. I hated single family rentals because I was just buying them all over the place and doing that method too, your cash flow is really low. So my goal was about $200 a door, um, which is fine. Um, in 2020, I sold a lot of those properties off and I actually make more money now with 11 properties than I did with 30 properties yeah, because I just paid most of them off. Mm -hmm. So. Do you prefer more doors or more profit? I or? prefer more profit for sure, because more doors is just more, more headache. headache. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's better to make like 500 in one door than three doors you make 200. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And you said you might be going to multifamily? Mm -hmm. Will yeah. you keep your single family, do you think? Yeah, probably. I'll keep it. Yeah, I think they uh, appreciate a lot. Yeah. In value throughout the years. So I think I'll, I'll keep it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you're watching the market or not, but there's mm -hmm. some markets in Texas, California, that markets are actually slowing down and yeah, so home values down. are decreasing. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot more difficult to get, uh, to sell a multifamily than it is a single family mm -hmm. too. Yeah. So when you have a 2007, 2008 market, I'd rather be stuck, you know, with the single family that I have equity in, which is another reason why I say be very careful on pulling everything out to 80% because if that property goes down even 10% of value, and then you have a realtor commission and other fees on it, you're really not pulling any equity out. Um, and if you held it for a couple of years, you're really not making a lot of cash flow either on that. Um, but you'll be able to sell it in a, in a crisis. So one of my goals is to always be able to, I call it like a fire sale. If I have a $100,000 home, I wanna be able to call someone up and say, Matt, I got this house, it's worth 100, I can sell it to you for 70,000, do you wanna buy it? Yeah, it's a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. Like it's being rented out, like I need money tomorrow, buy it from me. Mm -hmm. When you owe 80% on a property, it's not that attractive to mm -hmm. people. Um, you know the famous like ARV, 70% of ARV minus repairs. Mm -hmm. Are you finding properties that match still, that? Yeah, I still can find it. I just bought one for my son and it's gonna the criteria you know okay. we bought for 35 he's gonna put 30 35 and sell for 150. okay yeah. is that the price for i don't i'm not familiar with illinois is uh -huh. the price yeah. for, like the arv around 150 over there uh yes in Bellevue, the area that you in do Bellevue, around 150. Yeah. okay i normally buy for 80 or 90 yeah. 100 and then it's 150 or 170 180. Okay. And then you have um, guys that work for you, or, or is it third-party contractors? Um, electrical, plumbing, yeah. and mechanical are third parties because mm -hmm. they need to be licensed. Right. But I have like a couple of people working full time. Okay. Yeah, to do the painting, tile, kitchen, all the yeah. <laughs> the other stuff. Okay. And you usually have around two or three rehabs at a time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, sometimes more, but yeah. yeah, at least two or three. And by this point, they know what to do. Oh, right? yeah, they so know. So you just give them the keys. And because once you do like uh, two, three times, they yeah. just go and do all over again. They, they know the color, they know the door, yeah. they don't even have to ask because it's just like basically same the same thing. thing. Right? Yeah, yeah, just lay the layout of the kitchen and it just tell which walls you want to do, but the, the rest is like, like standard. Yeah. yeah. Is that easier too to use the same materials and really have your costs? It doesn't help my cost, no. It's just, uh, I prefer to do every house different mm -hmm. just because it's, it's a preference. It's just for like design. Okay, I did this kitchen blue, so the next one I'm gonna do white. But actually you would save more money if you just like do all did of it all them. Up, yeah. yes. It's just because I enjoy doing the design. Yeah. So I just like, oh no, I did that tile. So this time I want a different tile. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that's just like. Yeah, I'm, part of, part I'm of like the, the op, I just like I'm like the exact same house because the guys, <laughs> like, guys normally like, do that way. The they don't care about design. Yeah, no, it's exactly <laughs> they go the into like all gray walls, all gray floor, and a white yeah. kitchen, and go like, okay, yeah, this is a guy sleeping in this house. Yeah, yeah that's exactly right. So I'm seeing a lot more people get away with like. Um, uh, the tile, the uh, tub surround tile, mm -hmm. it's just, it's plastic, but it looks like subway tile. Oh, okay, so I'm yeah. I'm seeing people get away with that. Mm -hmm. um, painted cabinets, I think you can still uh, do. Mm -hmm. um, I think it depends on the price point. Also, depends on right? the price point, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you think that there are a lot of investors out there that are overpaying right now and are gonna get stuck with homes? I'm not working with any that are overpaying, but I wouldn't recommend overpaying. Yeah, because yeah. you only make money when you buy, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. You gotta buy at the right price because if you buy wrong, yeah, yeah, it's it's hard. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna break even or lose some money, so be really conservative uh, yeah. on how much you buy. Have you lost money on one? I haven't. No, not yet. Not or come yet. close. Mm, no, I don't think so because when I think the uh, profit's not there, I just rent it out. Yeah. So then I'm, yeah, but IRV is always a higher, yeah, yeah. than what I bought. And what rent, what yeah. is the rent? Uh, can you get like the 1% oh, yes. in Illinois? Bef uh, all in or the IRV? Yeah, all in. Well, 
which one can you get? <laughs> I definitely can get like the how much you spend. Yeah. One percent. Okay. But sometimes the ROV was so high you couldn't get it one one percent right. after the refinance. But what you have in it maybe one percent. Yeah, oh yes. Back. Yeah, always. Yeah. Can you tell them what ARV is? Average resale value. So yeah. it's like, like what's the, the re what's the there? retail value of the house? We call it after repair value. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like what are you yeah. gonna um, re refinance for? Right. Yeah. So um, and then when we say one percent rule, if a house is worth a hundred thousand dollars, then it should rent for a thousand dollars. That's hard, I think, in in the areas that I buy, and I think it's still pretty pretty difficult. I think um, it's easier. But I don't know in Illinois. Yeah, Illinois it's, like it's easier than Missouri for yeah. sure. Yeah. So, how much money did house prices go up in Illinois? Do you know, like, what percentage? Mm -hmm. um, since when? Like since twenty twenty or twenty nineteen? Oh, probably twenty percent. Okay, same yeah. as here. Mm -hmm. And rents went up a yes. lot too. Yeah, a lot. Okay. What is a like a three bed, two bath, normal house rent 1890. for? Oh, really? Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's worth. 170 180 yeah close to 200. somewhere around somewhere yeah. there okay. 180. yeah interesting yeah. cool questions okay so you're still seeing houses selling for like the same the house has been selling for over asking uh -huh. for so long are you seeing a decline in that yes. lately a little bit some when the house is really nice and it's priced right it goes over asking but when it's just like a regular house that is not a flip it's not going over asking anymore. The updated house. The updated is house is for sure. Yeah, it's still flying over. Okay. Cassie has specialty of design. I follow her on Facebook, and she's my agent as well. So she oh, nice. does an awesome job. Yeah, yeah, I like playing with like tile and floors oh, and colors. I, I just copy her. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that though, because if that's what's selling, you yeah, know, and it sells. Yeah. Sells. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you doing any gold right now? I did a couple of years ago a lot, but now it's getting out. Yeah, I yeah. see <laughs> still some houses that have, I'm not sold on it, uh -huh. but I still see it. Was it was like such a short time, yeah. just like two years, and now you're stuck with a dated yeah. uh, gold everywhere again. Yeah, so still graves. And, mm -hmm. But if it's a flip, yeah. it doesn't matter because it's going to sell in a couple of months. Right. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. the owner is going to be stuck with that, and yeah. he had what he was trending on that time frame. So last year, though, you were seeing that anything was selling. Last year, even anything if, even was Even if it wasn't oh, uh, renovated yes. or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So are days on market longer in Illinois than they were last year? Now, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you know what, about the average, average day? Is it um, like 25 or 30? It, I don't know the average. Uh, no, I don't know how the yeah. average. Yeah. But I see like most of nice houses, it goes Quick, fast. So. Two days, yeah. Yeah. Normally, the agents list Thursday or Friday and wait until Sunday to get an offer oh, on Monday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's always like this short period. Yeah. Yeah. And if it's nice, it's going to sell for price. And you don't do anything in Missouri? I have, and I have my license in Missouri, but I just don't. Uh, yeah. I think it's too far. Yeah. yeah. Chris, what made you do Illinois, Missouri? I don't do anything in Illinois, Illinois? and I feel like I'm maybe You're missing out. Yeah, so it's funny you ask that. So I started in South City. Okay. People know so on the Missouri side, and then I left corporate in 2019. I only had nine units, and by 2019, Missouri St. Louis had already yeah. blown up. Yeah. And so I, but I was living in Columbia, Illinois, and so then that's when I was like, well, let me expand my scope. And you could literally buy a duplex for half, if not a third, of the cost. In the same way, I do like C, C plus okay. like neighborhoods. Um, you could buy two for one, if not three for one, uh, like in Belleville and Dupo. Compared but to South you get a hundred percent of the same rent yeah. that I do in Bevo. Yeah. And so that's why. Yes, there are higher taxes, and yes, you know, there, Illinois is more geared towards tenants. Mm -hmm. But if you buy it right and you screen hard enough, like it kind of takes care of itself. And I'll pay an extra thousand a year all day long for taxes. If I'm getting two for yeah. one, mm -hmm. um, yeah. so the numbers just made sense, and so that's I've been buying in Illinois uh, since 2019. Now, so I went from nine to sixteen. Yeah. Hmm. 
the yeah. online market, like, like where we're at, you can still get houses for cheap. Oh, we can. We're still like you, like a yeah. a house might be you might buy it for fifty thousand, but fixed up, it's worth one hundred and fifty. Mm -hmm. like and it don't take a hundred thousand to get it. Mm -hmm. But like in Edwardsville, Illinois, that fifty thousand dollar house is a hundred, and that the after repair value, you know, the gap is a lot smaller there. Because I do, I work with a bunch of people who do flip houses strictly in Edwardsville. And I just hear, you know, I ask all of them all their numbers all yeah. the time, and it's like, you know, that, that area, you, there is no houses to scoop up. Right. But, you know, like, like you talking about Belleville, Dupo, Collinsville, there's houses to scoop up all day long. Now. Yeah. And they still, like you said, they rent for high and they still sell for a decent price. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I follow, I look constantly at houses for sale, like, just like she said, if it's a nice rehabbed house, it's going like that. Mm -hmm. And usually what I see is over asking. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for, and for those of you who are realtors, go on the MLS and look at houses like that were expired six months ago, a year ago, call those people, see if they're still willing to sell. Go back go back like three years or four years and say, hey, I noticed you were wanting to sell your house for $200,000. Their house is probably worth 250, 260 mm -hmm. right now. They might be willing to do 200, take your commission off of that, kind of work some numbers backwards. So there's probably deals out there that way as well. Um, you know, or, or go, you know, go maybe, I don't know, 30 miles outside of St. Louis and just look at the areas that aren't hit. Um, I mean, Illinois, I do, I do hear that quite a bit. I hear that the rents are pretty good over there. Yes, they are. So, yeah, that's really good. Other, I have so, a yeah. couple of questions. Sure. First of all, do you guys recommend using your own money or borrowing money? Obviously, you started with a little bit mm -hmm. no money or maybe mm -hmm. less. Yeah. And, uh, you, is it in, in the time I've been around it's never use your own money and then other people say do use your, you know and all kinds of things so I don't know what the recommendation is there and then at what level do you flip them uh, you know do you paint a crack and hopefully it doesn't crack again until you get it sold or do you actually do these at a level that is fair uh, you know, obviously you're not going to buy a pig's ear and turn it into a silk purse. But, mm -hmm. uh, um, and then do you use a real estate agent or do you well, do we all are, this stuff? We are real realtors. realtors. <laughs> we are realtors, so. Okay. Yeah, we are uh, agents. Well, I used to have a real estate license. But, okay. but I, I would definitely recommend, you're going to get more exposure selling your home as a realtor. You're going to get more exposure selling your house as a realtor. Okay. So, and... It's kind of like the union. Realtors like to work with other realtors, so That's right, true. right. Yes. So I felt much better after I got my license. Like before, I had to compete really hard yeah. to get a property. Now, when I put an offer, they say, "Oh, it's for you." Okay, yeah, I'll see what yeah. I can do. So they they just think it's easier. Not just it's not buying; it's just because they know you. And if you were a well-known investor, they know you're gonna close the deal. You're not gonna go there and tear the house apart and ask for more money for repairs. So they know if you put an offer, you're gonna follow through and you're gonna close. So it's it's better for the seller as well, not just for the buyer. Right. Yeah. And to answer your question about money, uh, I think it depends on what kind of investor you are. You can be more conservative and go slow and have like more equity. And if you have money to use it, or if you want to scale faster, then I think the banks, it's like other people's money, it's, it's a good idea. My yeah. question is, when is, is basically similar to this first one. I heard you say um, the bird method, right? Or you, uh, and the profit was lower, but percentage wise, is it the same or is it higher? Well, I mean, technically, you're making infinite amount of return on your money. So if you want to count it that way, um, your your wealth is going to grow a little bit slower doing the Burr method, and your cash flow is going to grow at a slower rate. Um, but then you have more money. You're able more to do it. You're liquidity. able more liquidity. Right. Yeah. So I was thinking if you got 10 grand in the property and you're making $200 a door, let's just say it's 20%. still something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's twenty percent, but if you pay a hundred grand for a property, um, and you make eighteen thousand because you rent it for yeah, you know, you're, you're, prob whatever, you're probably then you got eighteen percent, yeah, versus twenty percent. 
for whatever reason, the numbers will come out like two hundred dollars most of the time. Like even if it's a hundred thousand dollar home or a two hundred thousand dollar home, you cash flow, right? Like, I don't like two hundred. Like, like yeah. it's it's just low. It's, it's low. No, I don't think it's um, a good deal. It needs to be a little higher. It needs to be yeah. like four hundred. Yeah, and that's why I sold a lot of mine doing that method because I was basically doing a rehab, and then I got two hundred dollars a month, and I have a partner, so we had a hundred dollars a month. And then we had taxes and I'm like why are we doing this this is like a waste of time you know I don't want to I don't want to wait 30 40 years to reap the benefits from mm -hmm. this um, I, I'll also say this on using your own money or using using hard money um, I was against hard money in the beginning I just kept using my own and I could do two or three flips um, on my own because I'd borrow the 20% and then I was paying all the repairs out of pocket um, when I started using hard money, I could do three or four flips at a time, right? So maybe I was making a little bit less of a percentage, but I was able to make more it's overall volume. each month mm -hmm. because I was doing four, volume. yeah, four in volume. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like when someone says, I'm going to do my own flip, right? I say that's the worst idea ever that you could do because you could probably flip three houses a year by yourself. Like if you did all the work, you guys could do three a year. I can do 20, 30. As many as you want. As many as I want. <laughs> yeah. As many as I find I can do. Because you're you're there every single day and then you just bought yourself a job. Yeah. It's like, hey, congratulations. You went from making a hundred a year to making a hundred and twenty a year and you're working all the time <laughs> again. Which the point of real estate is financial freedom. Um, so not only that, but one thing I always tell people too is while I have three while she has two or three flips going on. She's also able to make money as a realtor. And then if she wanted to do something else, she could make money doing that mm -hmm, as well. Yeah. So your overall income, maybe she makes 30 off of a flip and you make 50, but she's closing two a month. So she's making 60 and, you, and you're making 40, 50. She's outperforming you there and she's able to free up her time to do other things. Do. Or travel, because yeah. you yeah. travel a lot too. <laughs> so what's your remedy for no good contractors? <laughs> Interview them. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, if they're referrals, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't had any bad experiences with contractors. Do you have uh, trouble finding people who want to work on your house? A lot. I think that's the hardest part of the the whole enterprise. It's contractors. General, especially being like or, a woman. Yeah, but. It is hard, yeah. A lot of people don't want to work or they want too much money. Yeah, it's hard. They're not reliable, most of them. You, of course, you find good ones, but sometimes you have a budget. You cannot con uh, contracting uh, with like a company that's doing like homeowners. Right. You gotta find people that can do for cheaper. And then when you find these people that do for cheaper, they don't do a great job and sometimes you don't know or they do like the first little job really nice and then they just start to not doing that anymore and you got to be always there just like looking and just making sure everything gets good Annie was asking about the the size of the projects also and the quality yes. yeah I like doing more like cosmetic so I don't get anything like that's really structural that you got to do like basements or cracks in the wall I try to avoid those it takes too long to finish, and the longer you keep the property before you flip, like less money you make. He, so he's saying, like, when you rent a property, mm -hmm. how do you fix it up versus when you're flipping a property? Same way. Same way, mm -hmm. no matter what. No, no matter what. Are you replacing the HVAC systems and if water needs, heaters yes. if you're if they're mm -hmm. like a certain age? More than ten years. Really? Mm -hmm. Even a HVAC system. And sometimes I don't. If it's yeah. working really good, I don't. Depends on the HVAC company say. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Depends. Like if it has only like three or four years of life, it's not yeah. worth it. I put that on the budget before, and mm -hmm. I know that I have the budget budget to do that. And then the materials you use are they the same as a flip as a rental? Mm -hmm. same are you materials. putting granite countertops? Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. every single rental. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It it'll get back your money in the rent. Yeah. And in the appraisal, also in the reappraisal. So you're mm -hmm. trying to avoid calls, maintenance calls in the beginning. Yes, by always just fixing everything, <laughs> everything up front. Everything up front. Yeah. 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 Is that answer? It's not fun those calls. <laughs> I guess 
one of the things I've learned in, I have a couple of people that own real estate, apartments, all that kind of stuff. And they have people that work on those apartments. And I work on their house. They won't let those people work on their own property. Is that the kind of people you look for? Yes. Bargain basement, they can get it on the wall and mm -hmm, that's yeah. about it kind of a thing? Mm -hmm. Well, they're, they're going to be very limited to what they're working on, right? So it'd be hard to hire like um, signature kitchens and baths to come in and do a kitchen and a flip. It just wouldn't make sense mm -hmm, right. because they would charge 60 grand to do a kitchen. You can't flip a house. But if you find someone that maybe left their current company and was doing work on their own, like if you're an electrician and you said, hey, I just quit my job. I'm looking to get started. You're just as good as the person that's working at um, uh, whatever one of the big electric big companies company. are here because you were the one actually doing the work before. The only difference is now you have your own company. So we're looking for people like that mm -hmm. that are doing the work. So you're getting the same quality. You're just not getting that the company name name behind Head it. Behind, yeah. yeah. Because, well, never mind. So some union people do side jobs. I'll just say that. <laughs> I mean, so it sounds a bit like union guys. Yeah, I know they're not supposed to, but it sounds like you're acting a bit as the contractor. You're We're general you contractors, crew, right? So you yeah. have a crew that does yes. some things, and we need an electrician. Mm -hmm. If you know an electrician, you know a plumber. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So, I, I so that that's the other difference of hiring. Like, if you hire a sig, like I'm not picking on signature. I don't know anything about signature and fast, but I just know they do really good work. But if you were to pay them, they're going to pull permits. They're going to call the electrician. They're going to call the plumber. They're going to call. They take care of all that for you. You just sit back. We're calling anyway, the plumber. Yeah, we, yeah, we when they don't show up, work. we're calling them, mm -hmm. yelling at them. You know, I'd yeah. say another thing with your vendors, they don't work for you. They absolutely do not work for you. They work with you and they're your partners. Don't tell a vendor that they work for you and, and you're paying them so they, that's not right. They are, they are in partnership mm -hmm. with you. Right. I mean, you talk to them the wrong way and yeah, they're gonna leave. Mm -hmm. And then you can mm -hmm. hang the kitchen cabinets um, on your own. Yeah. So um, I think that's why I've never had trouble, whoever asked that, I've never had trouble with the vendor because they're my partners, right? And I treat them, I treat them fairly. So, you know, I'm always calling them. I mean, similar texts like, hey, how, how can I support you today? What do you need me to do today for you? I just hear a lot of, and even me, myself, it's hard to find a lot of people to work. Sure. Like, no matter how good they are, how much they am sometimes, it's just, that's been one of the, well, she kind of said it, that's like one of the main, that's mm -hmm. your main ingredient. Yeah. You know? so, yeah. Well, think about, so, depending on how old you are, 2007, 2008, how many people were going to school to be an electrician or a plumber, or they didn't have people going to school for that, right? One, it was frowned upon. People didn't want to go in trades because they were saying, oh, you're just an electrician or whatever. You need to go to college and wear a suit and tie. And then in 2007, 2008, there was a whole bunch of new construction that wasn't being done. So the demand for service workers went down. So the average service worker, plumber, electrician, most you're probably one of the younger people that you work with. Or oh yeah, all the guys I work with are 60. Plus. Older, yeah. right? There's this, there's this age gap in, in trades because for it was being beaten people's heads. You know, you need to go to college, you need to go to college, you need to go to college. Well, electricians and plumbers make a lot of money. Make six. I, a lot of my friends are in the trades, make a shit ton of money. Oh, yeah, um, of money. And they and I'm laughing because they can charge whatever they want because mm -hmm. there's a shortage. Yes. I mean, I remember electric panel for me was probably around eight hundred thousand dollars. The quote, what I called you the other day, was eighteen hundred. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. I mean, yeah, I gotta do I'll it. pay it. Yeah. I don't know how to change a panel. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah. So you're trying to do everything at a level below permits? No, I, we pull permits on everything. Okay. That's So when we have the electrician or the, the plumber, when you have the, the, when we say the trades, electrician, plumber. Mechanical. Yeah, HVAC. Uh, they're all, per, yeah. yeah, they're all per, pulling permits. Yeah. Their insurance and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're yeah. licensed yeah. and by, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. If you don't pull a permit and you come, at least in Missouri, you, and yeah. you re do a kitchen, they're probably gonna have you tear it out. Oh yeah, I think yeah. yeah. I tr I've tried like to <laughs> like just replace some cabinets and that. Yeah. We can do cabinets. We can. Sandy do McGowan's wall, not yeah. having. Everybody knows. Supervisor. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so have I. She was That's terrible. Real well. <laughs> they move her away from me. Anytime they say my name on it, they're like, "Don't worry about it. I do it." Oh, she, was she was terrible. Grace, edit that part. <laughs> I don't <look> <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, other that kind of stuff. And I don't know. Like she was saying, mm -hmm. you can. You can, yeah, you, you can do all kinds of stuff without a permit. Mm -hmm. you, only thing you have to have a permit for is what you just said, electrical. Yeah, electrical plumbing, yeah. Plumbing yeah. And HVAC. yeah, you can. We can do good. all that. We have to. We have to have a general contract. I mean, taking out walls. You know, in Jefferson County, though, where I'm from, I mean, it's really laid back. Um, I mean, most. If it's municipality that doesn't have occupancy, then they're a little more lenient. lenient yeah. But you guys have occupancy we'll in do. all of your. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. For the longest time, Chesterfield and Ellisville didn't have occupancy. I don't know, Chesterfield, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unincorporated St. Charles County. Yeah. So, um, who, who recently purchased a property and just wants to share like how they found some details on it? Or how did you guys find your first properties? Uh, I found the one through network. Uh, our, the one that we did our recent flip on, I found it through networking, uh, and the guy bought it for the taxes, and I bought it from him. Actually, it's from Facebook. I found it on Facebook. Oh yeah. Okay. Facebook Marketplace. I bought it for fifty grand. What did we put in it? Thirty. Right, thirty. Uh, thirty, and we sold it at one sixty-five. One sixty-five, right? Yeah. yeah. Something like that. It was nice. Like, That's good. Over asking. It was almost fifty. Like over yeah. Asking. Yeah. But I, like what he was saying about using a realtor, I have a good friend who buys and does houses and he refuses to use a realtor. He just takes the first cash offer, yeah. you know? But like our house, we put it on Facebook for I think 10 days, shared it, got nothing out of yeah. it. And then she took it over and we got 20,000 20, over asking mm -hmm. uh, in four days. Yeah. He, he, he didn't want to use it. her. I'm like, oh, we're using her. <laughs> so let's try it. <laughs> Yeah. No, I get. I mean, I'm an investor also. Yeah. I, you know, I still have to pay the other side. Um, it's just it's knowing that the closing is going to happen. Otherwise, like if we do a for sale by owner, then we know we're going to do both sides, mm -hmm. and we're no, we know the transaction is going to be horrible. Right. Yeah. So because the owner has no idea. They have no idea. Yeah. Maybe they bought their house ten years ago, mm -hmm. but you know they don't know any of the documents and. And sometimes most of the investors they think they are saving money when they go for yeah, sale by owner, but normally they are they are losing. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. I'd like to share one though that I just did too. It was the duplex, and it's in KC though, which is like a C C class neighborhood I would say, and uh, and it's it's varies on neighborhood, and uh, it's I got it for six sixty five. I got it for sixty five, and then I remodeled one unit. Think like double the rents basically, and uh, and I think all in I'm at like I think I'm at like probably about 80, 85, so maybe eighty five. I haven't I haven't calculated the final numbers actually, but somewhere around there eighty five. And uh, uh, my plan is, and I got a seven percent interest rate on that. I'm doing pretty good in cash flow, making a thousand bucks a month on that, uh, 500 a door. And, uh, but whenever, my plan is to hold it in its current loan until rates go down and then I want to refi it. I might pull out my equity, I haven't decided. I mean, it just depends on where I am then. But I prefer leaving a little equity in there. Yeah. yeah. So, I like cash flow. one strategy I use, once you have a certain amount of properties and I don't know if you've done this with yours. I like to bundle them together. If I know I'm gonna have, so I like doing them in four packs. If you have four properties that you know you're gonna have for a long time, I don't know if you do this with yours, but uh -huh. I take them, I wrap them in one loan. Let's say they're each worth 100, so 400, they're all paid off. I'll pull out a line of credit on those properties, and then I'll use that. So there's a thing called return of equity. I don't know if anybody's familiar with, you're in finance. Return of equity. 
So I talk talk about it all the time. So you have a multifamily that's paid off and it's four hundred thousand dollars, right? And it's paid off, and you're like, this is awesome. My cash flow, I'm getting all this money, and I'm getting a ten percent return. I would, I hate that, right? Would you keep anyone here? I hope not. If you're, in, if you want to be an investor, you wouldn't keep four hundred thousand dollars in a savings account because that's basically when you pay off a house, that's what's happening. So your return of equity is how much money can you make off of that four, $400,000? So let's say that you pulled that money out, $400,000, and you had a 7% interest rate, that's fine. You're not making any money at all with that, with that $400,000, you pull it out. Let's say each unit rents for $1,000, so you have $4,000 a month, you pull that out, you find out what your mortgage payment is on your line of credit, if you're able to make six thousand dollars with your four hundred well with your three hundred thousand dollars then you have the two thousand dollars more are you guys following me on this the two thousand dollar difference is your return of equity so you're making two thousand dollars more cash flow each month that you weren't making because your money was just sitting there yeah yeah i was wondering because i never heard any investors say that they like they have houses. Do you ever, do you ever see Grant Cardone talk about why he hates, um, I was going to say Gordon Ramsay, but uh, <laughs> Dave, <laughs> Dave, Dave Ramsey? Dave Ramsey. Yeah. Like real estate investors don't like the Dave Ramsey method because he says to pay everything off, but you're not making any, it's it's dumb money. It doesn't know what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what right? I'm saying. Right? So you pull it out and make it work for, work for you. That's bringing back the bird method, though, basically. Doesn't have to be. No, because you already paid off those properties. So you, if you put your properties in different buckets, let's say you have like the two duplexes that are making $1,000 a month, right? I'll find a property that maybe you've owned for a while and you owe 25, 30, whatever on that, pay that one off, and then you move that over in the paid off bucket, and then you wrap those together. So you have your different, you have your, whenever your assets, whenever your money starts making money for you, that's when you're rich. That's when you like become wealthy. Mm -hmm. Like your your thousand dollars is making money for you on another right. asset. Mm -hmm. Can you wrap when you were saying wrapping the loans together? You can't. Can you wrap a different houses together? Yeah. On loan? Yeah. You have your single family. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. yeah. It's it, called a portfolio loan. Which banks? Yeah. Which banks? Any it? any bank. Yeah. Know, so small, smaller, the, smaller the better. Estate, the is, smaller the better. My money's get you uh, do try to do that with the bank that you already have a yeah. relationship with, and you just go and bring that to your uh, officer, loan officer, and they will explain. Yeah. Well, I think the key thing that Chris was saying is that if you do that, um, it's for long term. Long term. Because if you go to sell one. It you messes can. the whole, like, yeah. you have to pay the loan off and do all kinds of stuff, so just yeah. like caveat. Yeah, that's why I kind of say, like, okay, I'm going to keep these four. Yes. Or, like, these are in Illinois. I'm going to keep these. You know, these are my Missouri properties. Yeah. Yeah. I know we're in an hour, guys. Quick question. First yeah. of all, I'd take a property in Caseyville any day because then I could go to Dairy Haven. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's my favorite. Oh, my God. What's it called? The dream dairy Haven? Yeah. Twist. Yeah. 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 Oh, so oh, yeah. I'm like, how is it? It's yeah. But a couple of you mentioned C neighborhoods or C properties. What does that mean to you? A C neighborhood, so on and so forth. You just see it and you buy it. I don't know. I kind of compare like what I think is an A, like in our area would be Edwardsville, which is hard to get into because everybody wants an A class one because it's safe and or uh, they feel like it's safe anyway. And then you go down to B, and then maybe maybe Collinsville would be a B, and then uh, Caseyville, a C, and an E. St. Louis might be a D, or like Centerville and stuff like that. That's how I look at it with just my. Um, yeah, that's the way I My experience. experience. But yeah. if we don't, if like, knowing like you probably don't, I don't know if you know those cities or not, but if someone doesn't know those cities, you're, so you're saying like A class is like your rich neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Rich yeah. 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 <laughs> your, your, your B neighborhood is kind of upper middle class. I would say right. Sular. But like each C one of those right. cities has different classes. They have different classes yeah, different in classes, them. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think yeah. you can go yeah. kind of by Working the price class. of the rent also. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, yeah, probably I, A I, would be like 2,500 or 3,000 a month um, yeah. in Illinois. Yeah, yeah. that would be an A. Yeah. And a B would be like... Yeah, you could do it by value yeah. of property. Um, and you're, you're saying, because where I, where I came from in St. Joe, I could buy a lot more cash yeah, mm -hmm. right. than I can in St. Louis, like time and a half, even two times. Mm -hmm. um, so I was a little shocked when I came to St. Louis. But, so you're saying in Illinois, for the same amount of money, I could buy more cash for it? Yes, I, okay. I think so. Well, I think another thing to add to that, which is from, you know, bigger pockets is they say you take the average of like the neighborhood. So if the neighborhood's an A, or I'm sorry, if the neighborhood's a C, but you do an A renovation, and the probably going to find a B, B tenant yeah. on the average of yeah. the two. Yeah. I do that a lot. I think yeah. I, I do that. Yeah. That's one of the things I'm copying from her because I'm like remodeling some of my old ones to be more the next class up I get off my rents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say someone someone said that before too. We never know why someone's living in the area that that they do. Could be a family member. Could be that they grew up there and they're mm -hmm. they're comfortable there. Um, but you know, from my experience, I think it's it's worth it to wait that extra month or couple weeks to find the right tenant because I don't really think there's a like a bad rental. Like the num the numbers work. Like if the numbers work, it's finding the right tenant and maybe just holding off a little bit longer. And then in the long term, like it doesn't matter where where your house is located, really. Yeah. Like as long as you the tenant, as long as the tenants them. right and they're paying and they're as taking care of the property. As long as the house is nice inside, they will pay. Because I have a fourplex that I'm renting for like thirteen hundred a door. Next door rents for six seventy five. So and it used to be five hundred when I bought it and I renovated and then I was able to. Rent. I was going to rent originally for a thousand, but I had so many people interested. I end up renting for thirteen hundred a month each door. Yeah. Are people outbidding each other on rentals oh. right now? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's like following her lead <laughs> on it. Like I know that area where her uh, fourplex is, and I'm just like was amazed, and I'm like, okay, I gotta start updating all this yeah. stuff because it's it pays off on rent. Yeah. And not only that, you get higher rents, you get uh, better tenants generally. Yes. Or high, for like sure. higher paid tenants at least decent jobs and stuff like mm -hmm. that and then uh, uh, what else I don't know you have less maintenance uh, it works out seem seemingly I think the appraisal like comes actually. in bad at all oh yeah better yeah. appraisal mm -hmm. sounds like you should buy the four finger next door though yeah exactly <laughs> I tried to I made an offer <laughs> yeah he was wanted to sell for the double offer the one I buy I buy for I bought for 150 the four blacks and then he said, no, I'm gonna sell for 200. And I go like, no, it's too much. <laughs> Is that hard, right? mm -hmm. no, uh, I talked to the owner. Oh, okay. Yeah, it wasn't oh. like the, the company. It's like the little one on the right. The neighborhood it's in, it's like a low income neighborhood. Mm -hmm. it is. So like she's got and like professionals live in there. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool. That's like yeah, I say, that's you cool. never know why they live there or the reason yeah. for yeah. it, you know. Um, I mean, maybe they relocated and just looks like a nice I mean who does live there why did you why do they live do they pay more I I don't know <laughs> yeah, the, the I don't know it's like this yeah yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that one is an amazing scenario I yeah. never would have guessed it to work well, Collinsville's yeah. right like what 10 minutes 15 10 minutes from downtown so yeah. like Maybe a lot of will. military like to be in the Collinsville Belleville or yeah. Fairview area because they're halfway between base and halfway between the city yeah. so okay that's just something I've noticed I I think that's good mm -hmm. for two, like uh, you got Edwardsville on one mm -hmm. side of you and then you mm -hmm. got Old Fallon on the other side. Yeah, yeah. Right, it's right, right in the middle. Right yeah. in the middle. It's a great location. I, I have a tenant right now, she stays in my Caseyville house because she goes to SIE and Swift, mm -hmm. both the college. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Perfect. Interesting. Cool. We're going to hang out for half an hour if people want to. We'll just talk and get to know each other. And Unless anyone have any other questions? A question that the, the construction loan on a uh, existing property because I built a house before. You know how the construction loan works. I didn't know they offered them. You could buy a property and do a construction loan. Now, that's what I'm doing on the duplex. I'm closing on next week. But how come more people don't do that? Like when you were, you kind of brought it up, and I kind of missed it. Mm -hmm. Just because it's just harder to get bank loans. Well, like if I you're if you're married with two kids or a kid or even one kid, three kids. I mean, you don't want to live in a 
Well, no, I'm not. It's not occupied. Oh, it's not. It has to be occupied. You have to occupy it. To what? Or to get the what name of the loan? The home talking. style loan. Two hundred three k. Or two hundred three k FHA. But You're that's so, FHA. But I do that oh, conventional. on conventional. Yeah, twenty percent. It doesn't have to be. It's commercial conventional, so it doesn't have to be occupied. So you just put it. But you yeah. gotta put more. You gotta put twenty percent yeah. on the. Home style on the two hundred three k and home style. You didn't you have, have to, to put out because more. FHA. So it's like. Uh, oh, you gotta, you gotta be three to five percent. Yeah. yeah, it's the same loan. Oh, it's, 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 it's just like it's just now. like so. putting the scope of work together, and you say you're gonna spend forty thousand, and then the house the house is sixty, so we got a loan for a hundred, and, they and they then you put twenty, and they give you hundred, and they they give you yes, yeah. Yeah. they give you hundred, but you put down. twenty instead of spending the forty plus the down payment on the house. So and you, just, you do that quite often. And you, the and you do hard money, just whatever is easier to come across. Well, yeah. I'm trying well, because once you get, once you have like a lot of projects going on at a certain time, eventually you run out of cash. So, yeah, this is my first time doing the, the bank loan. I yeah. just like the, the construction loan, <laughs> non occupied to twenty percent down. Yeah, and it might be twenty five percent now. It's twenty. Some some banks. Are, the one I just did is twenty percent. Okay. I do twenty percent. Some now. banks are changing. Yeah. Um, yeah, but if you ask them, they still, if you didn't close, they still can change your loan. And then you can put all the remodel money yeah, on the same that. loan and then yeah, pay 20%. It's all on the same Oh, loan. is it? Oh, so yeah. you're going to put all the construction funds on the same loan? Yeah. Yeah, I, that's, I think that's better. But I never hear about that. People, I never hear about people doing that at these meetups. Is why it's, uh, it's more so hard money or like a house hack. Or like it's only credit cards. 8%. Mm -hmm. I've used yeah. credit cards as well. Yeah. I've used credit cards on my first one, yeah. Interest-free for 18 months. Yeah. What's a good hard money interest rate? Um, I, I, for me, I, I mean, we have one that, that we use. It's like 7 or 8%. Hey, Eunice, what's, uh, what, is what, still what, 7%? what does Dominion charge us? <laughs> 7 per, hard money, 7%. Yeah. Did you say Dominion? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have twenty. We have a twenty-year loan right now on a property that's six point two five. On a on a rental, twenty percent down. On an investment property, that's really good. Yeah, they're a private lender. Well, they're a big private lender. But still need twenty percent down. But and we have to keep the house for three years. But it's six point two five. Where usually, like when you do investment, it's for it's a private money. But usually, when you buy an investment property, you're going to be higher than you're like one percent over prime rate. What's the name of the company? Dominion. Dominion Financial. Yeah. I think it mailer from them. Like I'm always hesitant. Like, is this a scam? Yeah, you don't know if they're legit or not. That's why I always like hear something from them. I know Cassie is a good guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, I stick with the same person, so I just yeah. call them. So usually most people have to get approved and then they tell someone when they buy a house, we just buy the house and then and then, ask and then we ask them. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, hey, we just bought something. Um, because you work with the same person, mm -hmm. they don't have to, made they process. just know. <laughs> yeah. You will after after a while. Yeah. So those requirements you have to hold it for three years, it's their requirement. Yeah, because the rate's so low. and. Yeah. Like a lot of hard money will charge 1% um, processing Generous, fee. Yeah. yeah, like 1% fee of the loan. Um, it's usually interest only. Two, yeah, two or three to exit. Most of them like 2%. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's charging a lot now. Yeah, like almost everybody I know that uses hard money, 2%. That, that's because they're all using local. Yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah. I think. The rates I'm hearing are 16, 17 yeah. percent, which to me is way too high. But yeah, I'm 18 percent. 18? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're like seven percent. Yeah, that's much better. That's why you use your own money sometimes. So. <laughs> yeah. You're doing flips at 18 percent sometimes. I, I did a zero couple. Yeah. It doesn't really matter though because it's no. if the numbers make sense. Yeah. yeah. And then you. Or just sell. If I, do, if, if I flip, I just sell and pay the loan off. Yeah. But if I refinance, that's why I'm not doing BRRs because it's getting really yeah, hard to refinance. Because yeah, yeah. the mortgage is going to be so high yeah. on the reappraised value. Yeah. 
Are you finding that they're tightening like the requirements yeah. the banks are making it harder to get approved or is it just the interest rate? I think it's just the interest rate. I don't I don't see the they're, they're gonna ch they're gonna tighten up, I think. They probably a little bit. Yeah. Um depending on your income, the DSCR loan, debt service coverage loan is also really good, especially for multifamily because they don't care how much money you make as long as the property covers the value. Mm -hmm. As long as the income covers the, the mortgage, then they're fine. DSCR, debt service coverage ratio loan. Uh, rate is a little bit higher. You have to have your 20% down still, but your income doesn't matter. So, I don't know about Gil, but yeah. The smaller the bank, the better, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. I mean, I bought my first rental property on a handshake with a bank that was just bought by Lindell Bank a couple years ago, but they didn't run my credit or anything. There's a lot of small And that was 2015. Okay. That wasn't so, that no, long ago. No, that long ago. ago. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Now what type of, sorry, what type of terms, like what the terms? They'll do 30 year on it. Yeah. I 20, you get a little bit of a, of a discount, but. Did Lindell Bank bought them out? Yeah, well, I you used to use Rockwood Bank. When they get, gave you a certified check, they did on a typewriter. It was Springfield and the Bank of Hillsborough. Yeah, they're both on Edwards Yeah, I work with Trenton Bank. What? Trenton. Yeah. Community Bank there again. Yeah, community banks are. Yeah, stuff. community banks are. They work with you if they know you. I know uh, uh, Caleb Davis is using uh, Bank of Springfield right now. Oh, I see. Yeah. Bank of Springfield you know is really Caleb? good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah no, sure. Yeah. I, I remember I, I remember when Caleb uh, when yeah, I when I first met Caleb I remember when he was gonna get started in real estate. Oh yeah, maybe 2016. Yeah, I met an electrician that went to high school with him. He said, "Oh my God, he just <laughs> blew up." Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's possible. I yeah. mean, you're you're probably three to five years of where you want to be. Yeah. Um, as long as you're willing to put the work in. My question on hard money, because it's always something I have had issues understanding. So if you're going to get a hard money loan and keep the house as a long term, and you say it's a 20-year loan at 10, 12 percent. So they so they won't do a 20-year loan. They're only they're only going to do like probably the longest 18 months, but probably you know, six, months, yeah. six, six months, months six months to a year, year. six yeah. months to a year. That's your you said earlier you did some on a 20 year. Oh, that was like the rental, other, like a portfolio this, yeah. loan. No, the seven uh, percent loan. Yeah. yeah, our our holds are on a tw are, actually they're on a thirty year loan, but they're at seven. They're like a, is that the same company that does your hard money loans? They, they yeah, they they do both. Oh, yeah. That's what I think that's what I yeah. Yeah, I think a company just do two types of loans. Because hard money, it's always short term. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah there, you, you don't, you never want to keep like a two years. Yeah, yeah. like eighteen percent because it's interest only too. So even on even on the loan that you just took out, that you're borrowing money and, and they're funding the uh, rehab, it's probably interest only. Yeah, I want it to be interest only. Yeah, not, the loan's only nine months. Yeah, and it will close out at nine mm -hmm. months. Yeah, and then I'll have to get a which is why they do the short term the tricky part is that typically there has to be seasoning on a loan so sometimes you can't go through the same bank maybe your bank will let yeah, you my bank doesn't ask me about seasoning yeah now. but sometimes like a right bank away. won't do another loan you have to go to another bank to refinance or wait it. six months or yeah. wait yeah i got a question about hard money uh the 18 percent is that over the project you owe 18 percent it's or is it like a, is it amortized over a year or something or, or no. it's every month. Yeah, right? yeah I don't. So think you pay eighteen percent of what you borrow. Every well, time. yeah, everything on the so end besides two percent that yeah. I pay up front. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I don't pay. I mean, I don't come up with yeah. money. I come up with zero. Yeah. I own none of my money, so that's why the rate doesn't matter if the numbers right. make sense. 
So it's two percent to originate, and then you do the project. He disbursed all the money for the remodel as well. So it's the house and the uh, whatever you're gonna spend on the project. So it's all to, all together in one loan, and in the end you just pay off everything. So it's three percent to exit, two percent to originate, and I think it's one point three a month. It's fourteen percent a year. So all together, yeah. I see. So if you keep the property for three or four months, it's, it's not that much. You cannot do it like a very expensive project. So a quick flip, you're mm -hmm. saying it's just A quick flip is mm -hmm. fine. Hard money with mm -hmm. a high interest oh, yeah. rate. Mm -hmm. We're going back to that Dominion lender. You're saying that was hard money at 7 8% interest? Yeah, they're private money. Uh, like what differences between private money and hard money? Because I feel like the 12 18% is being the same huge? category yes. as 7 8 It's there's probably a group of people that put their money together for this institute. Uh, yeah, and they a lower rate. But I think a 7% is for rentals. I think it, you're gonna have to keep the loan yeah, at yeah, least yeah. for three years, you were saying. Okay, so there's yes. longer. Uh -huh. Well, it's they'll a do longer hard, they do hard money too. For but not a 7%. Yeah. yeah. They do? Mm -hmm. okay, yeah, but you're doing so many, and they have no, when they, when they loan you the money, you're there, so they have really no risk. They're a big, because but they're a bigger, they're a bigger returning. company too. Yeah. So they're able. To, think of hard money as like, uh, like a title, like a, what are those places called where you bring your title in? Oh, you know, title by, uh, like a title loan. loan. Yeah. That's basically what hard money is. It's like you go to when you need money fast, you go to Title Max or whatever it's called. Like you give them your title, your car, and they're yeah. like, great, we're gonna give you the money at eighteen percent. You're saying, mm -hmm. hey, I want to buy this That's property. Yeah. It's such a good deal. Like charge me whatever you want. Because I don't have the money, they're they're taking such a big risk. Yeah. Yeah. So they have yeah. 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 I think so they have the highest rate. Kind of to yeah. explain it would be we all gave a hundred thousand dollars and mm -hmm. put it in the pool and we loaned it out compared to if I just had to give you my money out of my own account. Yeah, there's less risk when we're all I'm charging in. more because it's just me. Right. But I can charge yeah. less because we all collectively mm -hmm. right. went into the risk is like yeah. yeah, low. It's just when you pair the risk of like hard money those carrying costs with like the contractors that like could fall through and not show up mm -hmm. before work that yeah. just seems it's scary yeah, it seems yeah, like a lot. It is. Those two worlds kind of <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, but that's why. <laughs> but that's why. Yeah, <laughs> that's why you make money. If you don't take like a little yeah. risk, yeah, you're not gonna go anywhere. Yeah. I'm sorry. Generally, don't you? Uh, they're probably giving you a good rate though because you use them all the time and they're comfortable. They know that your you rate will get lower. You yeah, can start negotiating because you have more like negotiation. Initially, yeah. it will be higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, yeah, because there's more risk. Yeah, if you've never there's more risk yeah. for them. Yeah. yeah, if you've never done a deal in your life, I mean, yeah, um, yeah like we have a track record, so it's, right. That's what I'm yeah, I think that's kind of what he was trying to say. Yeah, yeah. It's still a really good rate. Yeah, yeah. and when inflation last year was like what seven or eight. Yeah. Because like the the big <laughs> banks are seven percent now. How can you do a seven percent? It's impossible. Well, uh, so <laughs> yeah. So if you, if you how, how so it? think of a market like California, right, where someone wants to buy rental property, the barrier of, of entry is so high that they're okay making a three year of four or five percent on their money. So you have people with excess money. Or let's say someone let's say someone bought a house in California for half a million dollars, and they recently sold it for one point five. They have to take that money and do something with it or they have to pay a, a tax on it. So people have all this excess money that they have to put somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Am I making that up or is that track? You're right they have to do something with that money or else they're getting taxed on it. Correct. Because well, once they take it, it becomes taxable income. But if they never take it, it's not taxable income. They have to put it somewhere. That's why you see like in the multifamily world, the cap rate in South City used to be 8%. Now it's closer to four or five because you have all these investors like, I could pay taxes on a million dollars or I can go buy a depreciating asset like real estate because we work with a ton of investors and we're like this doesn't even make sense <laughs> or like it doesn't cash flow even if they pay it off and like the cap rates four percent like it just doesn't make sense but they're paying cash because they have they have to spend their money mm -hmm. you're getting them from the coast you're getting them from the coast right yeah so we're in the Midwest and we're saying like my criteria was 10 to 15, per, really 13 to 15 percent is where I like my mm -hmm. return on, on my money. But someone out there is like, yeah, I, five. yeah, 5 percent, I'll do it. 
and we're like, well, we're getting mad here because we're like, well, that doesn't make sense, mm-hmm. and this doesn't. But they don't care. Yeah, because <laughs> like it's better than zero. They can't, it's better than zero. <laughs> yeah. So like we're always pissed off, and I'm like, yeah, but I guess <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What percentage on a house flip do you shoot for? Like after, like because we do the seventy eight percent after repaired value, and uh, you know you kind of hope that each one. Like, what's the amount that is, and because I do most of the work on them, uh-huh. but you're not doing any of the yeah. work, so like, is a 10% good for you? Or, I don't go by percentage, I go by like number, like actual amount. So, I try to do it's got to be at least thirty thousand dollars between 30 and 100. Okay, but not really worried about percentage. I do this 25 yeah. to 30, yeah, yeah. So if, it, if it's 30, and it's you're wanting to leave in the property, no, no the profit that you're gonna make after you sell. After you pay everything, like the author's closing, hard money, remodel, and the property. What kind of time frame is that? Like, four three, months? Three months. Three months. Month. Yeah. For 30000 it needs to be faster than two months. It needs to be done before than two months. If it's a bigger project, then you got to uh, think that you want more money out of it. And if you're going to hold for six months, six months, you don't want to just make 30000 Then you got to make sixty or eighty. Oh, most most of the time, season. like most of the time, it doesn't so make sense off. to do like the yeah. six month project though. Yeah. Like it's better just to like in and out, mm-hmm. like quick. Cosmetic. Cosmetic. cosmetic, yeah, because the market can ship so quickly too. You know, I mean, if you look at like when the rate literally went from like three to seven overnight, the market fast. just stopped. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the affordability of homes right now. The only thing that the thing that's keeping us alive right now is inventory is so low. That's it. Do you see with the house sales? Because like I said, the same kind of the same thing though is the higher interest rate, it's going to affect the higher, the more expensive house because there are people where they're buying a five hundred thousand dollar house, a three percent or six percent is making a huge difference on their house payment. But a hundred thousand dollar so house, three for three or six percent, really make luxury. a giant. So difference. people that are doing those type of loans are doing arms, and the rates a lot lower. So they're doing five-year arms, betting that the interest rate's gonna go down within the next five years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're doing adjustable. So adjustable mortgages are, are really big right now. They're coming back. I don't think the rate will ever even be in the fours, but if it could even get down to six, I mean, still fine. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone got spoiled. Everyone got spoiled. Two, yeah. Twos and threes aren't the, that's not a real thing. Yeah, yeah. This is a normal market. If you were young, all you'd know is that you should have bought a lot of houses. Uh, yeah. With, it, with your guys' experience doing a lot in the, the inventory shortage, which isn't, which isn't going to change. It's not going to change at all. Has anybody looked at buying land and bringing modular homes, something like that, to then make rentals or flip? So the people are doing a lot of new construction rental communities now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think in, well, in St. Louis, you're seeing a lot more apartment, like yeah. those bigger apartment build, buildings. How many units, what was that one that we went to? How many units was that? Uh, 70. 70? 70. No, 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 no. The one, the one that we, the big one that we went to last month uh, with, with Lee's deal. Yeah, over it's like 160 units yeah. or something. And they they rented anywhere from fifteen hundred to thirty five hundred a month. Yeah. Yes. It was three dollars a square foot. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so what about yeah. container homes? Are you familiar with? Them? Yeah, I mean, I people might rent them. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Would you live in one? Uh, That's the nice. question. Like you always have to ask yeah, yourself. No, I guess like preparing nice. for a rental. Like, would you want to live here? Would your kid want to live here? Like, what area would I buy in? Somewhere that I'm, I'm okay sending my daughter to. Mm-hmm. Like, yep, my, if I'd let my daughter live here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like. I had a question. If you were going to build, like, a 10-unit new construction apartment building, because that's one thing I've been looking at, and that's one of my goals, is to not to buy, like, an old one and rehab it, but to just build a new one and be done with it. How would you go across getting, go about getting the money for that? Using hard money or conventional? Syndication. I'd raise money like raise you would, I would raise money from a lot of people, but then like that gets really sticky because 
people have to be accredited investors for you to promote it. Or avoid yeah. SEC yeah. regulations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you start getting into financial advising at that point. So find a rich uncle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or what? just flip make a couple, of, yeah, flip three houses, get the money. Yeah. It should be the 20% down 20 payment down. for a conventional loan and then law and all, like all the construction. Because you're going to do most of the construction you said you do it, right? Well, yeah, like I said, I was just curious about how, because I haven't really talked to any banks about, mm -hmm. you know, $1.3 million loan for a 10 unit, do, you know, apartment building. I just didn't know, like I said, it, it, I don't even know if they'll do it, so I was just asking how. Yeah, I think they'll probably do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can we do DSCR type loans for new construction? Like, will they look at the. Probably the not because it's not performing. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. No, because it. Cause, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think because the asset's not going to cover the right. risk of the money yeah. they're lending because there's, there's no building. But yeah. essentially, it's the same thing as the conventional loans that you're using. It's twenty mm percent -hmm. down, right? And it's commercial. It's a commercial conventional loan, so they don't look at your income. Right? They don't. No, so it doesn't matter if you, yeah, you yeah, you bring up a good project, some, they yeah, trust some, you. Yeah. They'll they'll yeah. give you the money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The problem with like with building those here is construction rates are probably like 225, 240, 240 dollars a square foot. So you have to also find the area that's going to support that, um, which is very difficult too. So yeah, I've got I put the numbers together a little bit. Like I said, my company we do kitchen, bath remodels, and so we have a lot of like tile work we do. So it's a lot of little stuff we had to whittle it down some, but yeah, because it, it's a big. Yeah, because they don't want to take the loan off the land either. They don't really care about the land. They're going to be more focused on the building itself. Yeah. yeah. So it sounds like it would be similar like you were saying. Initially, it would be a construction loan, and then you would have to refinance it later once it's performing. As so that's what most of them are doing. Yeah, most people are building them, like the one that we talked about. They built it to sell it. Right, because after they rent it out, rent like it out. 85, 90 percent, so then they want to, so then they want to sell bring it. A, yeah, bring the investor to yeah. buy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so the unit to sewer, sewer. Yeah. 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 She was like a uh, Papa John's delivery person like five years ago. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You she could be you could be wherever now. you want oh, yeah. within five years. I think she's got like 400 units. Uh, I thought it would be a probably maybe five hundred. I think it's five hundred. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to for the sake of time, I'm going to turn off the phone. But feel free to talk and thank you. All right. Thank for you. For talking to us, I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Bye.